Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Victor and in this series we're going to be covering test driven development with Laravel. Now I've decided to go with the most realistic world case that I could give you for this project. And what I mean by that is I really want to show you every step in my workflow that I use every day. Now is my workflow going to work for you? Honestly, that's up to you to determine. Only you can know what's the workflow that works for you. Now this is the workflow that works for me, but it also may not be the workflow that works for me next week. I am constantly changing and evolving and looking for better ways to do what I do every day. But I do want to show you what I currently do and hopefully you can learn a lot from it and adapt it into a workflow that works for you. Your workflow is going to change, you're going to try out new things, those new things might work and they may not work and you may revert back to your old ways. But just keep in mind, it's always evolving and it's always changing. So don't be afraid to try new things and if they don't work, just revert back to what you were doing before. No big deal. For the project, what are we working on in this series? So I've been approached by the local library and they're looking for us to write a piece of software to manage the library. So the library, of course, has books. These books are categorized and of course they have assets and they have authors and they have due dates and they have reservations. And the library also has events that they host and book clubs and all sorts of things. So we're gonna be tackling this as real world as I can make it for you from scratch. And it's all gonna be test driven. So we're gonna write a really strong test suite for this whole entire project and I will try to make it as true to real world development as I can. We're going to be doing get commits, we're going to be pushing to GitHub, we're going to be doing everything that I normally do in my workflow. And my hope is that through this series you're going to gain the confidence to approach projects and really hit the ground running using Laravel as your framework. So what's the first thing we need to do? Well, of course, we need to make a new project. So I will call mine just library. Library is just going to be our working name. I don't truthfully have a special name for it just yet, but I may come up with a cool name for the whole entire project. But for now, library will do. All right, let's let Laravel do its thing and we'll be right back. All right, and we are back. Let's CD into that project. And the very first thing you're ever going to do in a project is you need to start your Git repository. So we'll do Git init. Now one thing, and I don't know if you know this, but with Laravel, there actually is a lot of Git ignore files built right into the project. As a matter of fact, if we see what files we have, right away we see that we have this Git ignore, we have Git attributes, and of course our Git project that we just created. So Laravel out of the box is kind of set up to do Git. Now if you're not familiar with Git or you haven't used it much, it is really a way for us to keep track of our code and put it into source control. Now in modern PHP development, Git is essential. So it is very important that you get used to the idea of version controls and commits and pushing to repositories and branches and everything that is associated with some sort of source control. So of course what we've done with that git init command is simply just create a blank repository. If we run git status, then of course we can see that all of our files are here, but they are currently untracked. So we need to add those all in and we can do that using git add and then a period which will add everything. And then let's do our first commit. So git commit dash m and I always call it initial commit. Pretty common. I feel like everybody kind of does it this way. All right, so now if we run get status, of course, we are clean. We are good to go. All right, what else do we need to do? Well, this is going to be test driven. So really, we're going to dive right into tests right away. We're not going to worry about the front end of this whole entire project until much, much later. I want to get the functionality first. And once we have all that, then we'll worry about the front end. So there's not going to be any front end in the first half of this entire series. So let's go ahead and open this up in PHP Storm. Now, of course, the tendency for everybody when they start a blank project is to build the front end. But realistically, unless you're working with a team and you have a designer that's already really focused around the design, this is kind of a waste of time because it will look pretty, but it really won't function. It won't have any functionality. It won't do anything. And so you are left with basically something that you spent so much time with and you can't really ship and you can't really deploy. You can't do anything with it. So this is why I feel like this approach 
is better for either a small team or solo developer because every minute that you spend in the first half of the project is going to be working towards the goal of finishing the project as opposed to things like design which really will evolve over time. However, for our project, a library management software is always going to need to do the same things. It may look different, but the functionality is the same. So that much won't change as much as the front end. So that's why this is important. So if we open up library, I am going to be using SQLite for this. So let's go ahead and set that up right now. And I will do a quick SQLite. This is all stuff we've covered in the Laravel Basics course. So if you have any questions on that, go ahead and check that out. So in this course, we're really going to be focused around the test driven part of it. So not much on the basics here. All right. So now, of course, we need to go back and we need to hit touch database database.sqlite. All right. Some more setup stuff. Let's go into the PHP unit.xml file. And let's go ahead and set up an in memory database. So we'll say DB connection is going to be SQLite and DB database is going to be colon memory colon. So what we've done with these two is, of course, we've set up a nice and quick database environment for our tests. So, of course, we're going to need that. So what else? What is next? Let's jump right to it. Let's go in my test directory. Let's go into features test and example test. All right. So what is the most basic thing that exists in a library? Well, of course, I feel like the integral part of a library is a book. So why don't we work around the fact that we need to be able to add books. We need to be able to edit and update and do a lot of things related to books. So let's start right there with that process. Let me go ahead and rename this file and let's name it book reservation test. Now we may decide to change this later on, but for now, I feel like book reservation test is good enough and describes what we're going to be doing in here. So with that, let's go ahead and start our very first test. So in order for us to build this project, of course, we need some sort of way of adding books to our library. So maybe let's start with a simple test of a book can be added to the library. Now, obviously, none of this exists. And the way test driven development works is that basically you write code that doesn't exist, right? And you have this optimistic way of thinking where you think about how you want to interact with your code and then you let the test drive the development. So we're going to be doing a lot of back and forth with this. And at first it may seem like it's daunting because we're taking very, very tiny steps. But I promise you, this is the way to do modern development. So stick with it. And I promise you that it's going to change the way that you develop. Back to the test. A book can be added to the library. So let's say this. If I hit an endpoint, let's just call it books. So if I hit the endpoint books with maybe a title of cool book title and perhaps maybe an author, I'm going to be the author of this one. After that hits, then I really expect our database to have a record for a book. So maybe let's be optimistic about this and say this assert that the count of my books is equal to one. Again, none of this exists yet. We're writing code that doesn't exist. So I definitely want to assert that we have a count of one, which means that my book got added. But I also do want to assert that we got a successful response. So let me go ahead and do that now. And let's say response assert. OK, All right? So we definitely want to make sure that we got an OK response out of that one. I think for now this is good enough. All right. So if we go in here, I do have this alias of PF and all that does is it just runs PHP unit dash dash filter. Now it does clear the screen before, but that's not necessary. That's just so that it cleans up my screen. So if I grab that test name, let me go back here and I'm going to run PF. And then that again, PF just stands for this. It's just an alias that I have. So if I run that, then we get our first failure. So our first failure is that we got a 404. A 404 error just means not found. And it does not match the expected 200. So though I really do know that this just means that our route doesn't exist, this is not a great example of what a test error should look like. Because you can think of this as sort of Laravel covering the real error. This is not the real error. This is the result. So to see the real error, we can add a new line here and it's called without exception handling. So 
Think of this, Laravel has this exception handling protocol where when an exception occurs, it bubbles up through Laravel and then it's translated to a proper HTTP response. And that is great because that's what's basically gonna give you a 404 page through the browser. But when it comes to testing, we really just want the underlying error. We want the real exception. So now with that line, if we run that, we get a much different error. And the error that we get is much more specific. We get a not found HTTP exception. Basically, all this means is that there is no post route with slash books, which it makes sense. We have not even written that yet. So let's go back here and go to my web routes. And let me erase that route. I don't need it. So route colon colon post. And then what do we know the route is going to be? We know it's going to be slash books. Now we do need a controller for this. So let's again do a wishful programming and let's associate this to a books controller. And this will really be the store method, right? Because if we are storing a book, then of course we're going to hit the store method. All right, let's go back here and run that test again. All right, so we get another error. And it says class app HTTP controller books controller does not exist. Of course, we have not made that controller yet. So let's go PHP artisan make controller books controller. And let's run the test again. All right, let's see what the error is now. Scroll back up. So it says that the method store does not exist. All right, back to PHP storm books controller. Let's add a new method here, store. All right, let's do it again. So now we get that this book does not exist. And what it's referring to is, of course, I wrote this book right here, this class. And that's supposed to represent a model in our database, but that doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and create that now. So PHP Artisan, make me a model by the name of book. Now, I am going to do a migration for that because I obviously need a migration for a book. So let me go ahead and create that now. And let's run the test again. All right, so it's still getting that book is not found because, of course, we need to import it. Yes, we created book, right? It's over here, but book is not imported. So a couple of options here. You could do app book because that's where it's going to be. And in my case, I will actually just import the class up here at the top. I just think it looks much cleaner. All right, let's do it again. And of course, we've moved on to the next error. And the next error is there is no such table books in the database. So this is due to the fact that we are not migrating the database. The refresh database trait, and you see here is grayed out because we're actually not using it. What it does is every time a test runs, and by a test, I mean a single test, not the whole class, but every time one of these functions runs, right before it, it actually migrates the database, and right after it's done with the test, it tears down the database. That way you have a nice, clean slate before every single test. Think of test as a very precise way of you testing your application. So, of course, you don't want a muddy database that could cause the tests to fail for a reason that it's not what you're testing. You really want as clean a slate as you could possibly get. So with that, let's go ahead and use refresh database and hopefully that'll change our error. Run the test again. And now we get a failed asserting that the actual size of zero matches one. It's actually failing down here. So of course there is no book. There is no count of one. So we really do need to have that book put in there. So let's go to our books controller and let's do something here. Let's just blindly grab my book, right? And I want to create a new entry. And I know that in here, eventually we're going to need validation and everything. But let's just say the title is going to be equal to request title. And same thing for the author. All right, let's run our test and see if we can get that created. All right, so we changed our error. That means that we're making progress. So now it says, add title to fillable properties. Now we've talked about fillable properties versus guarded. I don't personally do the fillable properties. I actually do the guarded equals empty array approach. I just feel like I am responsible enough to do this, 
but you don't have to do it this way. But this is how I do it. So again, I want to keep this as real as possible. So in my book model, I'm going to set the guarded property to an empty array. So what this is doing is turning off the mass assignment protection that ships with Laravel. The reason for this is remember anybody in a form can add any fields that they want and try to submit those into your application. So if you're not careful, you could potentially be open to injection into your database. So that's what this is protecting you from. However, if you do it the way that I do it, where you are explicit about each of the fields that you're passing in, there's really no reason why you need that protection. It's up to you or your team, really, if you want to use it or not. All right, let's go ahead and keep running through this. Let's see what we get now. Let's go back here and we get books has no column named title. Of course, we have a migration, but we have not filled it out at all. So create books migration. Let me go ahead and take this off. All right, so let's add a new string for title. And let's run the test again. Let's see what we get now. All right, so we have no column named author. Okay, let's go ahead and do that now. Go back, run the test, and we're green. So there we go. We worked through every single error and ended up getting green. How awesome is that? And that's the way test-driven development works. You basically run it until you run out of errors. And when you run out of errors, then of course it's working. It's ready to go. So that's a nice way to do it. All right. So what do I want to tackle next? How about this? Let's do some validation testing. So let's say a title is required. Of course, a title is required for every single book. So I will copy this setup up here. Whoops, looks like I misspelled response. Let me go ahead and fix that now. Response, I'm sure you saw that. All right, so now let's go ahead and hint that endpoint, but I'm gonna pass it a blank title. And then what I expect is I expect my response to have an error. It has to have an error because validation should fail. Right, so we can say error for title. So we should expect to see an error for that title. All right, let's run that test and see what we get. PHP unit dash dash filter, a title is required. All right, we get an error, and the error that we get is we get a not null constraint violation on book's title. So what we're actually getting is our database is complaining. And the reason why our database is complaining is because we are trying to do the insert. So we are not protecting at all. The validation, of course, is not in place. So our code is letting that go straight through. So let's go ahead and fix that now. Let's go back to books controller and let's go ahead and start validating our data. So we'll say data equals request, validate my request. And let's add the title field and let's make that required. So now I can actually switch out of this array syntax and just pass it in data because data is going to be our sanitized data. All right, let's try it out. Then we get another error. Let's see what's going on. So it says the given data was invalid. So of course, this is the error that we are looking for. However, if we go back here in our test, we are disabling exception handling. So let's go ahead and enable exception handling again. And let's try that test again. And we're passing. However, not really. So we are passing, but I'm going to run the first test. Now the first test fails. So that we broke something. And what we actually broke was a constraint violation because when we ran this right here, we didn't add author. So if you don't have author in this array, then that's not going to pass through. And so author was not filled. So let's try that test one more time. And there we go. So that one is passing. Now let me go ahead and test the entire book reservation test and let's see what we get. There we go. Our test suite is passing again. All right, let's keep going. Let's do another test. And this one is not going to be for title, but this of course is going to be for the author. All right, so we'll say the author. This time it will have a title. So we'll go back to cool title and we're not going to have an author. All right, let's try that test and we fail. We say session is missing the expected key of error, meaning that it didn't have any errors. And we know that because we need to put required right here. And let's see what happens now. Now we're back to green. 
So our entire suite is passing. Great, let's keep going. What else do we need? Let's go back to this test. And so, okay, so now we have a title. And so basically we have a way of adding a book into our database. Awesome. All right, so how about this? What about the part where we need to update a book? How about that functionality? A book can be updated. Okay, so if we submit a post request, then at this stage, obviously we'll have a book, right? This test up here proves that we'll have a book at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of here, this response. Let's put it down here, because this is the one that I actually need. So now, if we submit a patch request with title equal to new title, and let's just keep author the same. As a matter of fact, I do need to bring an author in. So an author is required. Let me go ahead and bring one in here. So if I do that, what do I expect now? Well, how about this? This assert equals, so I expect my title to be new title. And if and we can grab that by just saying book, give me your first one, right? There's only going to be one because remember the database gets erased every single time. So I expect that to be true. Now let's go ahead and do this all in one shot and maybe say a new author here. That way we could test both of those at the same time. So if we grab the book first, then we need to grab the title and then we need to grab the author. So this is going to be our update route. Let me go ahead and run this test and let's see what we get. So it says no test executed. Ah, of course, I forgot to put the annotation. This is the annotation up here. Let's go ahead and paste that in. Let's try that again. There we go. All right, and we get kind of a cryptic error. Let's see what's going on. Ah, of course, I forgot to put my route here. We're gonna hit books. We're gonna hit slash books. There we go. And we're gonna pass through that data. There we go, that's correct now. Let's go ahead and run this. And so we get that we failed asserting that these two strings equal. Basically, new title and cool title do not equal. And you may be wondering, how did we even get down here? This patch route doesn't even exist. Again, back to that exception handling. So let's run this without exception handling, and let's see if we can change the error. There we go. So now we get the patch method is not supported for that route. Great, there we go, that's what we were looking for. So let's go ahead and change that now. So let me do this route again, and this time it's gonna be a patch. And of course, we're gonna hit the update on that one. Let's run that again, and let's see what we get. So update does not exist on the books controller. All right, let's do that now, books controller. And let's add a new public function for update. Let's run that again. Now it's failing to assert that that changed because we're really not doing the update. So let's go ahead and do the update now. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to copy this and I'll copy this for now. We know we're not gonna do that, but I still need to accept what the actual book is that we are changing. So let's do that now. Let's go back here to my test and we cannot hit just slash books, but of course we need to hit slash books slash the ID of the book that got created. So a couple of different ways that we can grab that, but probably the easiest way would be if we just grab it right here, right after we add that, let's say book first, and then down here, we could just add book ID, right? We need the ID of the book so that we know what it is that we are actually doing. All right, so back here in my books controller, this is gonna fail again. Let me run this again. And of course, we're gonna get this patch doesn't exist because now we're trying to fetch books slash one. So I'm gonna use route model binding. Of course, this is one of my favorite features in Laravel. So let's go ahead and import app book as we did up here at the top, there we go. And so now we're gonna have a book. So now that we have that, of course, we need to go back here and change our route. So it's gonna be slash books slash, and remember, this needs to match the variable that I just made. Sorry, just book, there we go. That needs to match exactly what I just did over here. So this book needs to match that, otherwise it's not gonna work. So all right, let's go ahead and run this and we're back to the same error where the title doesn't match. So we can just say book, go ahead and update yourself with the data that was passed in. 
run the test and we are green. Awesome. All right, let's run the entire test suite now and see how we're doing. Copy. All right, so we're still green. Perfect. So while we're in a green state, I want to do a quick refactor in my controller. So let's go back to this controller and we have this validate data right here. And what I want to do is, of course, I want to extract this into its own method. So let's do something. Let's extract that into a method called validate request. All right. PHP Storm is going to ask me if I want to also replace the second instance of that. And let's go ahead and replace that. And this is what we have. So we have this new function that returns the validated data. We can change it to protect it. It doesn't matter. So now data is equal to that. But we can really inline this. There's no point in us having this in its own thing. So let's go ahead and inline that. And there we go. And let's also inline this one. And there we go. So now we have nice, clean, single line. And now let's go back to our test. And we're still green. So we know that that refactor worked. And this is the beauty of tests. I cannot stress this enough. How nice it is to refactor without having to worry about messing up your code. That's great. All right, so we got this working. Our tests are passing. Let me go ahead and do a get commit to wrap up this lesson. So get status, it looks like we have our test that got renamed. We changed our PHP unit file and our routes file and all that. I do want to break this up into a couple of different commits. And I also want to talk about this dot idea directory. So the dot idea directory is a PHP storm directory. And we really don't want to put that into source control. So before anything else, let's go ahead and get rid of this directory altogether. So to do that, if we go into our files, let's find that dot get ignore file, this file right here. So this is a list of files that you want get to ignore altogether. So we can add the dot idea directory in here. And now it will ignore that file. Check this out. Notice how it's here, right? I'm going to run the same command again, get status, and now it's gone. So it's as if it doesn't even exist. Let me pull up the GitHub desktop app because it's easier to see. And there we are. All right. So the first thing that I want to commit, let me go ahead and turn everything off. So let's add this get ignore. So update get ignore to exclude dot idea directory. Nice and simple get commit message. What's the next thing that I want to add? All right. How about this? Let's add the book. Let's add the book controller and let's add the migration. So this commit adds the book resource. Let's commit that. All right. Let's go ahead and commit PHP unit.xml and we'll say add testing database. Commit. Now let's go ahead and add the routes and the tests. So maybe just adds basic test for book. Commit and we're good to go. And with that, we'll wrap it up for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll continue to work through this book's reservation test.